Hi everybody, I'm Amanda. I'm reporting from Green Left. We acknowledge that this video is being filmed on stolen Aboriginal land. We express solidarity on, with the ongoing struggles for justice for the First Nations people and pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. I'm here with Nakshon Amir, an anti-Zionist, Jewish activist and former Israeli Defence Forces officer. He's an active member of Free Palestine Melbourne, as well as Refugee Action Collective. Today we will be discussing Nakshon's personal experiences and perspectives on Zionism, indoctrination in Israel and the Free Palestine movement in Australia today. Thanks for joining us today, Nakshon. Thank you for having me. Tell us about your childhood and growing up. What was your experience of Zionist indoctrination? Okay, so I was born in Israel, as you know, as you mentioned, and I was raised like every child in Israel into the Zionism. Um, it is, when I explain it to you, it's, um, I'll have to rethink about it because for me it's very natural and it's natural in Israel. Um, you grew up with a notion that this is our country belongs to the Jewish people and there are other people here around that they are we call them Arab not even Palestinians and they they don't like us they hate us and they want to throw us to the sea or things like this and yeah we have to defend ourselves from them that's the that's in general and and we don't talk too much on them. We used not to talk too much on them because it's not, we, we didn't even feel it. It was not a big issue in my childhood in the 70s because they didn't resist by then and there's nothing. There's, we didn't, we did our own life with it and uh, without thinking about it. Um, but this perception of, of, of things is, is, what you learn since since you are a child and and that's how like we, we never meet them actually because they live in their own own villages or towns we hardly meet them they used to be the hard workers in the, in the buildings for example um, 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 workers that came from Gaza or from the West Bank to work and that's that was the the interaction with them like I don't want to, to say like slaves, but they were like foreign workers and uh, like low-level people, and you never get to talk to them or to know them. So this this is a normalization of, of a distorted reality. So uh, there were in Israel, there's no there was no mixture. So there's Arab villages and Jewish villages. There are Arab school and Jewish school. You never learn in school about the basis, basic democratic values like equality or, or human rights. It's not something that mentioned, and 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 so you never you never get the the option to doubt what you know because that's all you know. You never get. I'll get back later on to to how I became to my what I am today. But I ask myself, why didn't I see it in my childhood, or no one see it in childhood? Because you don't, you know nothing about this. You, you can't. This is the reality you get. It's just like grew up in in in, in the eighteen hundred in the U.S. in the South, and for you, it's normal that there are people, black people, that are they are slaves. Yeah. It's not. You don't see it because if you're a baby and you're a child and you see it, that's what you know. So that's the way Zionism was good introduced to us and that's how I grew up. How was the Zionist indoctrination reflected in your conduct? So when you grow up this way um, and there was still I remember like threat in, from the countries around us so yes. Egypt was uh, more powerful than today and, and the Syrian army was strong and they all supported the Palestinian cause because they're all Arabs. Um, so there was always this threat of, of our existence and, and the army is a very important thing in Israel because of that. So you grow up, so that's what one thing of, that the Zionism made us to be. We admired 
the soldier, the army, we all, we all go, we all have to go to the army, but we not just have to go, but we're very proud to go to the army. So that, that's one thing that the Zionism led us to. And we admire mainly the combatants and the officers and the more, more extreme warrior you are, you are more admired. That's as, that, this is Israel. Um, I'll go to one more thing about Zionism. Zionism, even today, not in English, but in Hebrew, it sounds to me, uh, the sounds of it is like an ideal thing, like, a, I'd say, charity or similar to this. Uh, to be Zionist is, is to do good things. Yeah. So I remember in my childhood um, talking about Judaizing the Galilee, so it's north part of Israel. You have to Judaize the Galilee. It's a beautiful thing to Judaize. If you think about it today, what is it? It's just, just put more Jews and less Palestinians. And same to the Negev. It's the south part of Israel. So for me, it was an ideal thing. And we learned to travel the country and learn the, the Israeli country. So it was a value, valuable thing to do. So during schools or or in the holidays, we will go and, and having trips everywhere. I knew the map of Israel. Now we today, like my my like my hand, all the rivers, all the mountains. I know it by heart. So that's another thing to be connected to your country. I'm going back to the army thing. Um, so that's how I grew up. I grew up in a new and very young age that I'm going to be. I'll try to be an officer in the army and uh, to lead it. And so, so all this Zionist indoctrination background led us to be to inflict to our life in this way. A um, few more things. Uh, the whole conversation in Israel is, or the whole perception of Israel as a state, is Jewish. So the flag is a Jewish symbol. Yes. Uh, the anthem is a Jewish, it's all about Jews that belong to this country and came back after a thousand years. <laughs> what about 20% of the population, citizens of the country that are not Jewish? It doesn't talk to them. And it's not that it doesn't talk to them. In the name of these symbols, uh, we expelled their families and, and kicked them out from this land. And, but, horribly um, violent way. How are they supposed to, to, to refer to this flag or to this anthem? No, we didn't care. We didn't think about it. It mm. didn't come to our minds. So that is the way we, we, we ignore uh, the other part of the population. Um, yeah, and that led me to, to, to serve the army, which I, I guess we'll talk about later in this way. Can you tell me about the time you served as an IDF officer? So I I was in the army from 1985 to 1990, so five years, because I was an officer, combating the tanks. Um, and in the middle of that, 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 that's when the first intifada started. So I served in Lebanon, in the Golan Heights, all around. And I served during Intifada in the Gaza Strip, in the West Bank, in all these cities that um, you sometimes hear their name, like Ramallah, Tulkarlem, Jenin, Hebron, Nablus, uh, and all other villages. So <clears throat> we just got to, to police the population there. So just remember, this is not Israel officially. But there was already a lot of settlements there, so the plan was to take over this land to be Israel. I didn't think about this this way. I I thought about it this way because I came from a very right wing family, so I thought one day this will be this will be our, our state. Because again, we didn't learn about democracy and and international law, so I thought, well, this is this should be our land. Why not? And we should we should be here and do our job. So day to day practices was uh, so so the goal of being us is to protect us from from their uh intifada their rising up um but the day-to-day -day practices was really humiliating really uh, oppressing so we could i uh, give you some examples we could take 
go to a house in, a, in like a strategic point in the village and take over the house. We'll, this, will, this will be our military base for the next two months. You go out, your family, this family, is, it's your house. We don't care. So we sat there for two months in this place. One, one um, um, part of my, of my, uh, my, my uh, unit. Uh, you don't do it in Melbourne or in Israel. You can't take people's house because you want it. I was able as an officer, a young officer, 21 years old, to stop cars in the middle of, of every village that I've gone through. So it's, it could be a village that no settler, Jewish settler going through. But I decided to stop the cars here and one by one check them and detain or stop people from going to the day-to-day -day work. So it, would be, it could be a teacher. He's now driving to the school. Now, you stay here for two hours now. Or I could give him a mission. You see this 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 Palestinian flag up there? Go get it down. Or you see this, this stone that yesterday you put to, 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 to annoy us or to stop us because it was not a violent uprising. They had no weapons by then, only stones and they littered uh, tires. That was the resistance. So we made them move it or clean it or, and, and the all aim was just to, to annoy them and to keep them on their knees and to oppress them. So they won't think about a uh, high resistance. Uh, I would go in the middle of the night with my soldier. I would go around the village and I decided, um, all this graffiti, graffiti on this wall. I didn't understand what's written there, but yeah, we have to clean it. They have to clean it. We got knocked the door in the middle of the night, just common family. It's frightening enough when in two o'clock in the night, someone knocking roughly on your door, we got in, you go get some paint and, and the, the, the wife would be shaking and even yelling. So I would tell her, shut up, like in a very rude way. And the child could be terrified. I don't care. I mean, it is what it is. That's what you have to do. Well, think about this child later on. Time after time, you get this this reality, and he, then he sees cousin incarcerated, or he will he will be angry. And one day he'll go in Tel Aviv and explode himself. That's how we we planted the, the this seeds of of the next resistance. Uh, yeah, that's that's the day to day reality, and the, this the whole. <clears throat> goal of it was to to keep them down and are you asking me how, what I thought about what, what I felt about it so I didn't enjoy it so I think if I remember today properly I thought well it's not nice to do it but we have to do it because all these people here are either terrorists or they're going to be terrorists they're all against us they all hate us and that was the way, the way I I explain myself. What am I do? Why am I doing it? Because that again, on the background of how I grew up, I couldn't think in a different way. Tell us about your shift in perception. What has led you to become an activist for the Palestine movement today? Yes. So so. This is a long, very long. Um, journey that I gone through. It didn't happen in one day, not in one year. So it took me a very long time to get to what I am today. And it's not an, an, an something that I was aware of in every stage of it. So I think if I, I, I try to recall and, and put my finger on some stage and, and, and think of what was going through my mind. So it, I think it started after the army when I, I thought about the West Bank mainly, um, this is not going to be our land, our our uh, country. It's not going to be really Israel because it's, we can't do it. Too many Arabs here, too many Palestinians. And I thought it's, uh, it's, it's very rough and it's very, it's not going to happen and it's messy and why should I think about it? I, and I disconnected myself from every involvement 
even in thinking, in, in politics. I said to myself, I, it's, I know it's very selfish, and from my activism today, I can't understand how I, could I just put it aside and ignore it, rather than search into it and see who's right, who's wrong, and what's good to be done. But at that stage, I said, uh, I said to myself, I'm not going to be involved in it, I'm not going to think about it, I'm going to think about myself, my family, my friends, I'm going to enjoy my life. Uh, and I didn't read newspaper anymore. I didn't read. I didn't watch TV. I was out of it for and not for many. I didn't. I didn't vote at the election because in Israel it's not compulsory. So I think for twelve years I didn't. I, I can't remember the second intifada, mind you, the the war on Lebanon in two thousand and six. All the politics with prime ministers in Israel. It's all it's all like a dark, <laughs> dark uh, period for me. Uh, and only when we came, so we came to Australia in two thousand and nine, and I started. So my daughters went to school with with Hindus and Christians and Muslims. So I, I suddenly I thought I thought, well, this is normal. And what, what, why in Israel does Jewish school and Arab school? Why is it this way? And then I thought, all right, and there's Jewish village in Israel, an Arab village. There's no mixture. There's so mixed town, but even there, the, it's, it's a different, not suburbs, but, but neighborhood. There's no mixture. But this not, this is normal, what's happening here. So I thought, well, in Brunswick, it's impossible that people will say, this is a Christian neighborhood, there's no place for Jewish or for, for, for Muslims here. It just... So I started to learn that it's, this is normal and what's happening in Israel, it's not normal. We, whereas when you grow up into it, you don't see it this way. And, uh, and I think that's what started the, the shift. Um, I didn't... It, it, by then, I didn't change my policy. I didn't got into politics. For five years, we've been here. I didn't read papers, even in Australia, not about Israel, nothing. But I think my, my values or my perception of, of life or normal life has changed. We went back to Israel in 2014 for some reasons. Um, and I got into activism, not for the Palestinians, but for other thing, which is, um, it was the, 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 refugees and, and asylum seekers there. So by that time, there was tens of thousands of refugees that came from Africa, mainly from Eritrea and from Darfur in Sudan. The Sudanese escaped from a real genocide, and the Eritrean escaped from horrible dictatorship. They called it um, um, North Korea of Africa. I don't want to elaborate, but both people runs for the life of their own holocaust, I should say. And they were in Israel, and I saw um, African people in Israel. I didn't know what's going on, because I remind you, I, didn't, I wasn't involved in anything, news and politics. Uh, in a nutshell, I got into it, and I learned it, and I thought, how, how... And Israel didn't want them. Israel said, no, no, you go back to Africa. And they tried to find new, other, other countries for them in Africa, as if they're all Africans. Put them in Uganda, uh, and I got into activism in in in, in uh, the refugees movement, and I learned, I learned, and, and and by the way, it's all the same point of Zionism because this is the Jewish state. So although you've gone through your own Holocaust, we can't help you. Go back, and I was shocked by this, by this. Uh, policies where you well, we escape from our own holocaust and we expect the world to to get us in other countries but we cannot accept people that that escape from the own holocaust what where's where's our humanity and i got into this and 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 this is the time that i started to be activist and that all right you have to to act in this world to help the vulnerable people and by then I started to, to get into the, 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 
the, the Palestinian matter and I learned a lot. I, I educated myself. I, I, I watched a lot of, of lectures and, and read a lot from historians, from real historians that show the real history, not the, not the, the propaganda history of, or the myth of the Zionism. And I learned the truth. And I learned that that's Zionism and that's what happened with Palestine. And then I joined the, the Palestinian cause. Can you talk about Free Palestine Melbourne and the work that you do? Yeah, so I, I joined Free Palestine Melbourne about four years ago. And Free Palestine Melbourne is, is a grassroots movement in Melbourne, as it's in his name, for mainly for Victorians. And support of the of the Palestinian struggle for for rights and justice and freedom. Um, our goal is to to raise or to build an um, anti-apartheid movement because we think that the, that's how the change will come. Like in South Africa, it will it will always be only from outside powers that press Israel to change its its policies and and, and dismantle this regime. Um, this is a demo, it, this organization builds on on people every every sort of people in Melbourne. So there's Hindus and there's Jewish, there's Is, Islamic people that are not Palestinian, they are Palestinian, they are Christians, they are even Israelis. Um, again, we are a democratic group. We are not attempting to represent the the, the Palestinian community or to talk in, in their behalf. And we have no leaders. We are full democracy. We get the, our decision together. Um, the way we are trying to, to, to build this movement is by raising awareness for the reality because, you know, the, 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 the main public in Australia, there are quite ignorant and I don't blame them. It's far away from here. And the truth or the, what they know about the reality in Palestine is from the, the media here. So ABC or, or Channel 9 or Channel 7 or the newspaper. And we all know they're biased for Israel. So we try to educate the public, which in many times they don't even care, which again, I'm not blaming them. Uh, we do it through... Uh, Vast, a lot different ways, or we're trying to find the new ways, if you can offer us. Uh, we are doing, for example, uh, um, film screening. So we try to gather people and show them uh, documents about Palestine history or the reality today. Uh, we having we had here this year uh, Francesca Albanese, as we all know. We took part of the organizing of her tour here and, and the talks and the forums. Uh, we had Miko Pellet, which is Israeli, like me in the US, much more prominent and much more uh, time in this in this uh, in the BDS mainly. So we had a full uh, hall for him to talk and to to educate the people. Uh, we had a Nakba exhibition, which I'm proud to say that was my idea, uh, but not my my execution. So we we ended up putting it in 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 St Paul's uh, Cathedral. Again, uh, the idea was uh, like like we have a Holocaust museum in every city in this world, which is good to learn the history and and people are getting into this. Uh, museum and, and get outside amazed or shocked by by the reality of, of the Second World War against the Jews. I thought it's it's a good idea to have a Nakba exhibition or Nakba museum if I could, but I can't. Uh, so the people can get in and get out and say, "All right, that's what happened. This is horrible, and now we understand what's going on in Gaza or in the West Bank and why are there terrorists." Uh, because otherwise, otherwise, there's no context to what uh, to what the Palestinian to the Palestinian um, struggle and, and rising. So we ended up doing it in in St. Paul's, 
And so that's our day-to-day -day activity. And we are hoping to get more and more people into our movement by this way. There's arguments out there that as a former IDF soldier, you have no business being part of the Palestine Solidarity Movement, given that you played a role in actively oppressing Palestinians. How, can you res how would you respond to these criticisms? Well, yeah, so the accusation... So the criticism of Free Palestine and Melbourne, I don't think it's personal against me. And I think it's fair enough to 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 to, f to feel this way in some part of the Palestinian um, um, community. Um, I'm not sure about their reasons, but I can understand honestly that a Palestinian person will be offended by my presence because I was part of this regime that oppressed them, and I can understand. I didn't meet anyone like this yet. Most Palestinians, I, I have, I have the feeling that these people are coming, or, or this way of thinking is is coming from the Palestinian that are born and raised in in, in Australia mainly, because the, the, all the Palestinian that I meet, that g have gone through or have direct connection to the Nakba or to expelling from Palestine, or even people from the West Bank today, or f even from Gaza, they all hug me when they see me, and they are very, they get very emotional, and they appreciate my 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 efforts to, to, to join their struggle. So this is the origin of this. Um, I think I'm talking in behalf of Free Palestine Melbourne at the moment, because again, it's against Free Palestine Melbourne. I think it is the powerful of my talks, the power of my talks, is not because I'm, I'm clever or wise, it's because where I come from. It's, it's, it is because of my past. So if I say, it, and it, I'm sorry that this is a situation, if I say X, Y, Z about the reality in Palestine, exactly as a Palestinian say so, people in Australia sadly believe me and don't believe the Palestinian. So if I'm standing up and say, well, this is what I did, this is apartheid, It opens people's eyes, and I know it from from even journalists that interview me. They, she said to me, "Well, the interview you gave, people came back to us and said, well, it opens our eyes.' So that's the power of of my part in in Free Palestine Melbourne, and it's for Free Palestine Melbourne to decide whether they want to to use this this to use my services or my my um, my help." And if it helped the, the, the struggle against this, the, the, the apartheid regime or not, um, again, we are not, but Free Palestine and Melbourne is not, is not tempting to represent, as I said before, the, the, the Palestinian community. And we are we happy to, to consult with them, and we have Palestinian members, very prominent Palestinian members in Free Palestine and Melbourne, and we always talk about what we should do and is it appropriate or not. So. Um, yeah, I think I, th I think I can help. It's for Free Palestine Melbourne to decide if if with what platform to give me to to stand on. In your working career in the IDF, had you killed any Palestinians in active combat? No, I didn't. As I said, my time in in the IDF was in the first Intifada, so it wasn't that. I mean, people killed Palestinian by this time, not me. There was special more special forces. But I didn't. I I, st I even remember myself telling my soldier don't use more force than you need if when we are arresting someone. And not that I didn't see people doing it. And not that I'm claiming that I I, I think I didn't. But, and again, it's not to explain anything of what I did, because the whole frame of work was unnecessary. We shouldn't be there at all by the time. But I didn't kill anyone, for, to answer your question. Explain in your own words your perception of the essence of the reality of Palestine-Israel. What is the role of the Zionist ideology in this reality? Zionism, from its very beginning, is a racist 
ideology. It's the, the perception or the idea of having a Jewish state in Palestine. And that was an answer by the Jews that were persecuted in, in Europe for their own safety. They, they, they were seeking for a safe haven, which is, it's, it's, it's fair enough. They have to have a um, safe haven. By the way, most of the Jews at the time were not Zionists. Even when they escaped from Europe, they went to the US, they went to England, to, to Britain, to France, even to Australia. But part of them wanted to, to form a Jewish state. And they thought about many ideas, by the way. They thought about Argentina, about Uganda. They thought about even, even the Kimberley in Australia. But naturally, they wanted to, they, they decided to go to Palestine because historically, and that's again true, uh, there were Jewish people there thousands of years ago. Um, but they didn't want to come and merge with the, with the local population. They wanted to have their own state, their own Jewish state. And in order to have that, um, so have them doing it, if they would go to, to the Kimberleys, or no, Kimberleys is not a good uh, example, if they would go to Antarctica, it was still a, a, a um, racist idea, but not in the expense of anyone else. But one, if you come to, to a populated country with indigenous people, and you want to have a Jewish state, it will end up in ethnic cleansing. And that's what happened. And I'm, I'm going back to the first days, because that's the, that were the language by the time. So they talked about to Judaize this place. What's Judaizing? They talk about... Um, I'm trying to translate from Hebrew to English the... the, the the way they talk um, um, to salvage the land, as if it's their land, but it's occupied by others, unjust, unjustly, and so that was the language of all the of the all the Zionist leaders from beginning. And later on, in the 30s, uh, they started to talk about transfer. So they said, all all the leaders said, we'll have if we want a Jewish state, we'll have to transfer these people from here. And they couldn't do it under the Ottoman Empire and then later on under the British Empire. Although the British supported them and armed them and, and trained them, and they crushed any, any Palestinian resistance by the time. But this is under the, the, the British Empire. But once the British left the country, they executed their plans and they expelled most of the population in, in a very violent way with massacres and rapes. And most of the population of, of Palestine were gone out of out of Palestine because of that. And this is only this is the this is the execution of the Zionist ideology. You could you couldn't build. I mean, ha, if they didn't do that, the new state of Israel were not Jewish because there were more Palestinians there than the Jews. So they had to do it, and it had to finish since because the, the Zionist ideology is as much as possible land in between the river and the sea with as less Palestinians as possible. And it's still going today. So in 1967, they took control on the left of the land, which is the West Bank in Gaza, and started to settle there. So it's, it's a one line from the first of the Zionism up to what's happening now in Gaza. So in the, in the Nakba of 1948, they except for, for expelling 750,000 Palestinians, which is more than the Jews that were in Palestine at the time, they ruined more than 400 villages to dust, like similar to what they do now in Gaza. So they will not have homes or villages to come back. So this ethnic cleansing is going on and on and on till today. And this is Zionism. So when you ask me, why am I, am I an anti-Zionist? Because you have to be anti-Zionist to dismantle the regime of Israel and to gain, to gain 
justice and rights and freedom for the Palestinians. You can't do both. You can be Zionist and have justice. What is the state of the Israeli public opinion today? Do you have any hope for the Israeli peace movement? Well, the, the vast majority of the Jewish citizens of Israel, and it's not just today, who's always, they are Zionists. So there's a rainbow of, of political views. So there's the ultra-right and the left Zionists, but they're all Zionists and they're all supporting the Jewish supremacy. Um, you can't get justice with, with Zionism, as I explained in, a minute ago. So, so even the more, so the left side of it, they are more generous, they are more humane. So they are happy to give some crumbs to the Palestinians. It's just like we, I, I took your house, or all, all the levels, and I'm now happy to give you the, the basement and a little kitchen. No, that no justice. So even them, even if we go with their plans, it wouldn't go, it wouldn't work because the Palestinians will not accept it. We have to have, if we want to have full rights and equality to all the people between the river and the sea, so even the, right, the left-wing plans or, or ideas in Israel is not acceptable, uh, let alone all the others. And it's, again, the Zionists within the, the Jewish citizens of Israel is 99.9%. So, I don't have hope that it will change. It, and it will not change because because Supreme Group will never, or never in the history they gave up their advantages or privileges that they got from their supremacy. Why would they? Why would they need a lot of Arabs here with equal rights? So the only way, but that's what I said before about about Free Palestine movement, and I think if people even there are people like me in Israel. There are thousands like them, like my daughter, and but they're a tiny minority. And they even they know that they will not convince anyone, or they convince few. But the 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 change would come from outside, from outside pressure, like in South Africa. Uh, so I, if you ask me about hope, my hope is not from changing from within Israel. It's from the world. To, to grow a spine and to go for justice and, and, and support the Palestinian cause. That sounds like a good place to finish. Thanks for your time, Nakshon. And thank you, the audience at home, for supporting us and for joining us today. Green Left is committed to building this campaign and showing our solidarity to the people of Gaza, the people of West Bank, and to all the Palestinians around the world. There are rallies happening in every major city. Um, the Sunday rally here in Melbourne is ongoing, midday at the State Library. Um, if you're not able to go to those, there are smaller rallies um, happening and springing up every day in local communities. Um, and if there isn't any, you can organize yourself and start one. If you like the work we do here at Green Left, please become a supporter. It's the best way to stay up to date with our content and also support the work that we do. There's a link in the description below. Um, and without spending any money, if you can't subscribe, um, you can share this content to your social media, to your friends and to your family, and to help get the word out.